with Sega's recent announcement to rejuvenate its rebellious spirit by publishing new releases in iconic series like Jet Set Radio, Shinobi, Golden Axe, Streets of Rage, and Crazy Taxi, the gaming world is just abuzz with excitement and nostalgia. This bold move by Sega not only rekindles fond memories, but also sparks curiosity about what other treasures lie in their extensive catalog, especially considering their ownership of Atlas. So, in the spirit of this resurgence, we've put together a list of 10 Sega and Atlas RPGs that are ripe for a remaster or reboot. And with that said, let's dive in and explore these hidden gems waiting to shine once again on modern platforms. Radiant Historia was initially released on Nintendo DS before it eventually came to 3DS in an updated form. This is a turn-based RPG developed by Atlas featuring team members from the Mogami Tensei series and Radiant Historia by Triace. The game is set in the fantasy world of Vincure, a continent torn by war, where players step into the shoes of Stock, a young soldier who's on a quest to reshape history and prevent global desertification. The gameplay is characterized by its unique approach to narrative, allowing players to explore alternate timelines and witness different outcomes based on their choices. Environments are navigated from a top-down perspective, opening progressively with the narrative, and include puzzles and challenges that involve environmental manipulation and treasure hunting for items, armor, and weapons. Despite its critical acclaim and innovative mechanics, Radiant Historia faces accessibility challenges on modern gaming platforms, particularly following the closure of the 3DS eShop. Honestly, this makes a compelling case for its introduction to current platforms, offering fans of JRPGs an experience that combines traditional gameplay elements with a rich time manipulation narrative. Its blend of strategic combat, puzzle solving, and a story-driven journey through a war-torn world makes it an easy recommendation for enthusiasts of the genre. Skies of Arcadia is a standout RPG from Sega's Dreamcast era, and later ported to GameCube. This game is tough to overlook when discussing Sega's RPG catalog. The adventure is known for its immersive world and engaging narrative, where players take on the role of a sky pirate named Vice alongside his team, battling against the Volian Empire to prevent the resurrection of ancient weapons. The gameplay is reminiscent of early Final Fantasy and Dragon Quest titles featuring turn-based battles where players earn experience points to strengthen their characters. The expressive world of Skies of Arcadia is a major draw, offering a rich and alluring environment for players to explore and immerse themselves in. The game's overworld is split into six regions, each traversed by flying ships in a 3D space. Unique to Skies of Arcadia is the concept of discoveries, which are hidden locations that reward players with extra benefits when found. The world map is, at first, a blank canvas, encouraging players to chart the map through exploration. Additionally, there's a recruitment system where characters encountered during exploration can be added to the player's ship or base staff, providing various benefits to further enhance the exploration and battle experiences. This blend of exploration, strategic battles, and character recruitment positions Skies of Arcadia as a prime candidate for a modern console revival, appealing to both fans of classic RPGs and new players alike. While the West hasn't received many entries in the 7th Dragon series, this isn't going to stop us from including 7th Dragon 2020 on our list. This DS release actually stands out as a unique entry, notably for shifting the franchise's setting from high fantasy to a modern world scenario full of dragons. This game explores an intriguing premise, what if dragons wrecked havoc in a contemporary world, specifically in 2020 Tokyo. The result is a game where players navigate a drastically altered Tokyo, dealing with challenges brought on by the Dragon Bane Flower and its associated monster hordes. The game features a blend of classes, including hackers and the traditional samurai warriors, offering a fresh take on RPG character roles. Enhancing the game's appeal are the character designs by Shiro Miwa known for his work on Soul Hackers 2, which added a distinctive visual flair to the experience. In this world, the Tokyo Metropolitan Government grapples with the crisis caused by the Dragon Bane Flower and its monstrous consequences. With the self-defense forces overwhelmed, a special group named Murakumo steps in to manage the situation. The narrative includes a pivotal operation in Shinjuku, which doubles as the induction exam for Rank S Elite youths recruited by the Murakumo. The player happens to arrive last in the group and is tasked with navigating and surviving the transformed city. This backdrop sets the stage for a compelling gameplay experience, combining strategic combat with a storyline that mixes modern day elements with fantastical threats. All of this just makes 7th Dragon 2020 an intriguing candidate for a modern console remaster. Stella Deus is a tactical RPG co-developed by Atlas and Pine Grove for the PS2. The game features the artistic touch of Shigenori Soijima, who would later become famous for his work on the Persona series, and the story was supervised by Ryo Mizuno of the Record of Lotus War franchise. 
The game is set in the world of Solemn, which is being slowly devoured by a life-destroying mist called Miasma. The backdrop creates a stage for various factions to respond. Some of these factions see the Miasma as divine will, signaling a quiet end to the world but there's others that want to use it to grow their own power. Stuck in the middle of all this is the protagonist, Spiro, who takes on the role of deputy and navigates the complex political landscapes in an attempt to save Solemn. The gameplay of Stella Deus is a blend of story-driven tactical and RPG systems. Players control a group of characters, some integral to the story, and others met in side events. The actual world of Solemn is explored through an overworld map with point-to-point -point navigation featuring a date system that marks the passage of time to each destination. Towns are vital hubs where players can create and customize weapons and armors, sell equipment, and buy items like healing potions. On the other hand, camps set up during journeys serve as preparation grounds where characters can swap out weapons and armor and equip items for upcoming battles. If you had yet to experience this fantasy adventure, well, Sega should consider reviving the IP or at least making it available on modern platforms. Before Sega's acquisition of Atlas, Atlas had already acquired CareerSoft, known for its experience in SRPGs and later for their work on Devil Survivor. This acquisition not only brought the team on board, but also transferred the rights of the Grow Lancer series to Atlas. Initially conceptualized as a spiritual successor to CareerSoft's Landgrasser series, Grow Lancer blends elements of real-time strategy, RPG gameplay, and dating sim aspects, creating a multifaceted and player-driven experience. The series has numerous installments spanning across the PlayStation, PS2, and PSP, and is celebrated for its depth and complexity, notably for titles like Girl Answer 4 Wayfarer of Time, which boasts over 40 different endings. The prospect of a remastered collection of these games presents an exciting package for fans and new players alike. The Girl Answer series unfolds in a world threatened by ancient evils. Its heritage as a successor to the Langrasser series is evident in its strategic gameplay and thematic depth. For those confused about their release order and their availability outside of Japan, Girl Answer 2 and 3 were published in North America by Working Designs called Girl Answer Generations, and contains a few added features. Girl Answer 5 Generations, known internationally as Girl Answer Heritage of War, and the PSP version of Girl Answer 4 Wayfair of Time also saw a release in North America. And I wouldn't blame you if you've rewound this section multiple times to hear this release order, but it's just as confusing saying it out loud as listening to it, don't worry. A distinguishing feature of the entire series is the character art by Satoshi Urushihara, lending a unique visual identity to the games. We sadly never got the first game in the West, which means there's no better time for a reboot. Described as Sega Simulation, Sega Gaga represents a unique and introspective chapter in Sega's history. The game takes players on a meta journey where they assume the role of Sega Taro, who has just been tasked with saving Sega from losing the console market in their fictional revival, Dogma. This game not only embodies a humorous and self-reflective look at Sega's real-life struggles in the console race, but also serves as a profound commentary on the gaming industry of the time. The game's absence from the West is likely due to Sega's decision to exit the console market the same year, leaving many players in these regions unable to experience the significant piece of Sega's legacy. In Sega Gaga, players navigate through various Sega development studios, encountering employees who have mutated under the intense stress and pressure of tight work constraints. Then the story diverges from traditional RPG mechanics as Taro attacks these mutated employees with verbal abuse and insults, critiquing their games or personal lives to weaken their will. This unique combat system features an enemy will meter that depletes with each successful insult, and battles are then won once the meter is fully drained. However, failure to combat translates to lost development time, adding a layer of strategic management to the gameplay. The game is packed with cameos and multiple Sega IPs alongside unique meta mechanics related to game development and production management. An English localized remastered of Sega Gaga would not only preserve a crucial part of gaming history, but also offer a uniquely entertaining experience to a new generation of gamers. Sonic Chronicles The Dark Brotherhood is not your typical blue blur adventure. Now, this might be because it's an RPG developed by Bioware, and while it might not share the same scale or depth as Bioware's Mass Effect or Dragon Age titles, this game stands out as a unique interpretation of the Sonic universe. The setup has players embark on a mission with Sonic and his friends to rescue Knuckles and recover the Chaos Emeralds from a group known as the Marauders. I would only assume that a release on modern systems would attract a broader audience, allowing more players to appreciate the distinctive approach to the Sonic series. The gameplay of Sonic Chronicles is a blend of turn-based combat and exploration, with a unique rhythm and timing component. 
During exploration, players control characters by tapping the stylus on the DS screen to direct movement, and action buttons are utilized for specific actions like navigating vertical loops. Players are sometimes required to switch the lead character to leverage unique abilities such as flying, climbing, or jumping across large gaps to progress. Additionally, Sonic Chronicles incorporates puzzle elements, sometimes necessitating the party to split up to complete tasks, like pressing switches in different locations. The turn-based combat is augmented by the use of the stylus, where players activate special moves during rhythm sequences, adding a dynamic and interactive layer to the battles. So perhaps if Bioware finds the capacity, we can one day see a modern take on this gameplay approach. Yeah, I know it'll never happen, but we can dream. The Shin Megami Tensei series, along with the various spin-offs, have grown in popularity since its inception. Yet, the seminal titles that laid the foundation for this acclaimed franchise remain confined to Japan. While the first SMT game did receive an English release on iOS, it has since become incompatible with current devices, adding a layer of inaccessibility to its history. A remastered of SMT 1 and 2 on modern systems would not only revive these classic turn-based RPGs, but also introduce them to a broader audience. Despite these titles being available for Nintendo Switch Online in Japan, bringing them to a global audience with updated graphics and quality of life improvements would only enhance their appeal, allowing players to dive into the post-apocalyptic narratives and the unique blend of fighting alongside demons in a futuristic world. In SMT, players assume the role of an unnamed protagonist, a teenager who is adept at communicating with demons through a computer program. The game is played in the first-person perspective, navigating dungeons and engaging in battles against demons. Players use a variety of weapons and items, primarily swords and guns, which can be purchased from merchants. SMT 2 is set decades after the events of the first game and unfolds in the city of Tokyo Millennium, which is built on top of the ruins of Tokyo. In this world, where mutants, fairies, and demons coexist, the city is ruled by a religious-like cult divided into districts with a central unit called the Center. Players navigate the complex society where opportunities like gladiator tournaments and Valhalla offer a chance to ascend to the Center, a place free from demonic influence. And with a couple premises like that, why not have modern releases? While we all share plenty of fond memories of playing the Shining series, Shining Force 3 remains our favorite. The Sentry was the final collaboration between Sega and Camelot, yes, the same Camelot who would go on to create the Golden Sun series. Shining Force 3 is unique in its structure, being divided into three scenarios, each offering a distinct perspective from different young men embroiled in the conflicts between the nations of Aspinia and Dystonia. Unfortunately, only the first chapter was released in the West, with script revisions suggesting it was the complete story. A remastered version of Shining Force 3 would be an excellent opportunity to bring all three scenarios together into one package, finally offering the full experience in English and allowing players to fully appreciate the depth and complexity of this game's narrative. As a turn-based tactical RPG, Shining Force 3 features battles on square grids where each unit occupies one square and moves according to its move stats. Units can attack, cast spells, use items, or search the area with the actions influenced by the position relative to enemies and allies. The order of turns is determined by each unit's agility score and a random element. The player's objective in battles are straightforward. Defeat all enemies, eliminate the enemy player, or reach a specific town or landmark. The enemy wins if they defeat the player's leader, which varies from scenario to scenario, or if the player retreats. However, defeat doesn't mean game over, as players can retry battles, retaining any experienced gain which allows their army to grow stronger even in defeat, though the leader's death does result in some monetary loss. This strategic depth and the ability to progress even through setbacks make Shining Force 3 a compelling game that would greatly benefit with a modern remaster. Sega's limited release of the Sakura Wars series in the West remains a significant oversight, considering the franchise's popularity in Japan. While the series' animations and manga do come overseas, the majority of the games, including the main titles and 15 side stories, remained exclusive to Japan until Sakura Wars, So Long My Love, was brought to PS2 and Wii by publisher NIS America. Sakura Wars combines tactical role-playing with dating sim and visual novel elements to deliver a memorable gaming experience. The absence of an English remaster collection for the entire series is simply a missed opportunity for Sega, so let's just briefly go over the history of this series. The original Sakura Wars was released in 1996 for the Sega Saturn and saw multiple ports, including Dreamcast, PC, and mobile devices. 
Its PS2 remake, Sakura Wars To My Heating Blood, featured enhanced voice acting, improved graphics, and an updated battle system. Sakura Wars 2 Thou Shalt Not Die, which happens to be the last developed title on Sega Saturn, was also ported to Dreamcast, PC, and bundled with the first game for a PSP release. Sakura Wars 3 Is Paris Burning and Sakura Wars 4 Fall in Love Maidens continue the series on the Dreamcast, with the latter being the final Sakura War games for Sega hardware, later ported to PC. Sakura Wars 5 Farewell My Lovely was first released for the PS2 in Japan in 2005 and marketed the series transition post Sega's exit from console production. In the West, it was localized as Sakura Wars So Long My Love for the PS2 and Wii in 2010. The series did see a soft reboot with the release of Shin Sakura Wars, titled Sakura Wars in the West, for the PS4 in 2019. In this release, we were introduced to a new cast and an action-based combat system. This history underscores the series' evolution and the potential value of a comprehensive English remastered collection for modern consoles, but we can only hope that fans are enough to make Sega see this series as lucrative in the West. So as we wrap up our journey through these 10 RPG titans from the Sega and Atlas vaults, it's clear that there's a treasure trove of gaming experiences just waiting to be rediscovered by a new generation of players. These titles, each with their unique charm, engaging gameplay, and compelling stories, represent an era when creativity knew no bounds. With Sega's current mission to revive its rebellious past, the potential for these classics to make a comeback is not just a dream, but a tantalizing possibility. Here's hoping that Sega and Atlas heed the call of fans old and new, breathing new life into these games and ensuring their legendary status for years to come. After all, in the world of gaming, some stories are just too good not to be retold. Noise, 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 noise,